So good morning. So we are very pleased to have uh, today two of our most prominent uh, scientists of the IPHT, the Institut de Physique Théorique at the CEA Saclay. Uh, it's Roger Ballion. They are both very well known, so to introduce them, I think it's better to, to go on the web and, and look at their CV. And Francois David. And they have in the peculiarity to be um, experts in quantum mechanics and to have their personal view on the subject. So today we would like to ask them the 17 questions of Maximilian Schlosshauer. Uh, those questions were devised in 2001 in the book Elegance and Enigma, the quantum interviews. So I'd like to make interview with our two scientists uh, to know what is their deep view of quantum mechanics. So the first question, shall I continue? Okay, so then, good morning. We will start with the, 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 the first question, uh, which is what, what first stimulated your interest in the foundations of quantum mechanics? So, Roger, maybe. Uh, very, very, very old question. I had to test all the exercises which were in his book. And at the same time, of course, I read the version of the book version. And in, 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 the, uh, in the book itself, there is a part which, that there are a few parts which are not very satisfactory. One part which is not satisfactory is the part about quantum measurements. It, it treats quantum mechanics at, at length in a marvelous way. However, just the part on quantum measurements, it's as usual, just not, not really well treated, as in any, any book. And there were also a few other parts, but th this was the, the one which just uh, left me in a rather bad mood. And of course, uh, since you, uh, as any physicist, when you work, you forget about that problem. And I forgot the problem all my, during all my, my career until I was old. And then I could afford to think about such a problem which is so old and uh, not elucidated. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, it happened that uh, Theo Neuvenhuysen, who is here, just uh, had recommended us, a, one of his uh, former students, Armen Alaberdian, who is very good in uh, statistical mechanics. And then I just digged out a, an old question, which was, let's try to understand uh, quantum measurement by solving a model. I was not technically able to solve it really completely, so we did that together, and also together with Theo. And this is, during the last 10 years, the way we got really in uh, involved in, in this problem. Thank you. Okay, okay so thank you. My, my reason to get interested uh, in the last five years, let's say, about uh, looking at how people try to present and understand quantum physics is first teaching, because I have been teaching uh, quantum field theory at the master level, in particular at Ecole Normale Supérieure at the, the Perimeter Institute since a uh, few years. So I started to think, how should, could I present not only the how you use quantum mechanics and quantum field theory, but uh, explain the principle in a, in a sensible way. Uh, another reason is that I've been involved in some uh, committee uh, selecting uh, good project in, in, in Brussels. And uh, as a theoretician, I got a lot of project, uh, very interesting, uh, of people presenting quantum physics from the point of view of quantum information and uh, having either theoretical studies or project or experiment mm -hmm. and stating that their project would be used to build the quantum, try to build the quantum computer or to do quantum cryptography or test principle of quantum mechanics, but also under, understand the principle of quantum mechanics better than this was done before. And uh, I thought it would be a bit puzzled and I, I had to, to learn the subject and I wanted to, to, to learn more and to understand what was really interesting and not so. I think that was my two main reasons, apart of course from curiosity. Uh, could elaborate more, but, but uh, I think that's... So of course, you can work during all your life on quantum mechanics, which is what m most people do, uh, without digging the foundations, which is uh, something uh, rather uh, 
dangerous because uh, it touches philosophical questions and so on. So this <coughs> people don't dare to do that. So both of you indeed started to dig in the foundation or have been involved in digging this foundation of quantum mechanics. So this is a perfect transition to the to the second okay, question. Thank you. So um, what are the most pressing problems in the foundations of quantum mechanics today? Uh, I would say Roger. that uh, the most pressing question for me was to understand uh, quantum measurements. Uh, and I think we have succeeded to, to do that for ideal quantum measurements. And now the most pressing problem is to understand real, more realistic measurements and all these new types of measurements, weak measurements and so on, which are now being performed by experimentalists, but the foundations of which are not completely settled as well. Could experience. you define maybe what you mean by weak measurement? It's measurements in which uh, you uh, you succeed to to get, in, in principle, if you if you make a neat, clean measure, an ideal measurement, what is called an ideal measurement, uh, you measure one quantity, but the quantities which are incompatible with them, you just lose completely the information about them. So these weak measurements are measurements in which uh, you cheat a little, so you don't uh, get the full information about one quantity in such a way that you do not lose the information about another quantity, so you measure vaguely incompatible quantities together. So this is, uh, this is a challenge still, uh, which has to be... To be uh, I think we will have a, a few other questions to go back on the, on the issue of measurement. Maybe, maybe François, what are, what are the most pressing problems in the foundations of quantum mechanics today? Uh, I admit a little bit about this uh, question because uh, for me the term foundation is not very well uh, pressing. <laughs> precise. Yes, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, the thing, there is a problem in the foundation of quantum mechanics uh, gives the impression that quantum mechanics is something that is still very poorly understood. And some aspects of it are poorly, are not very well understood, but on the other hand, it's the most successful physical theory that has been, I think, uh, devised since uh, 2,000 years. And yes, you can, you, you can have 12 digits. A precision of yeah. 12 digits is something which is absolutely yes. incredible. No, but not incredible. only that, but uh, <laughs> quantum physics has unified the whole field yes. of physics, yes. of chemistry, of uh, it has application in biology. Uh, of course, a lot of phenomena are described by just classical physics, and we use and we have we are used to think in terms usually of classical terms. But for instance, I, I think it's striking to think that in fact. I th quantum mechanics is more, I think, more consistent than classical physics, and uh, which is in what sense? Uh, in the sense that it solves, or it gives, a, 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 in my opinion, a satisfactory answer to the fact that classical physics completely neglects the retroaction and the coupling between the o observation device and the physical object. In classical physics, you have a physical object, you have the observer, and uh, you look and you at the particle and say, okay, this particle has this speed, it has this position, that's a well-known, and you can measure everything without disturbing what's going on. And we know from experimental evidence, and now from the mathematical principles, that this is not possible. It's not possible experimentally, and it's even not possible mathematically. At the logical level, you, you discover inconsistency. And that's so this problem that quantum mechanics uh, has, uh, has solved. It, it, it has uh, introduced new questions, but I think it's more consistent. Uh, so this, this word foundations, actually, I think it's not so good. Yes. Because in, in, in a way, you could say just the converse. You could say that quantum mechanics is presently the foundation of all of science. Because the, the, from the reductionist way, if you, have, if you accept the idea of which most uh, scientists do, that uh, you can reduce uh, your theory at a lower level, quantum mechanics is b b below that. So from quantum mechanics, you can deduce classical physics. From quantum mechanics, you can deduce chemistry. From chemistry, you can deduce biology and so on. And from, from this viewpoint, from this philosophical viewpoint, uh, 
quantum mechanics is really the foundation of, yes, I agree. Uh, of science. So looking at the foundations is not so good. Mm -hmm. yes. So what the, the, the real question is rather uh, the interpretation of quantum mechanics. What does it mean? Yes and, yes, and if I can jump in, well, this, this brings us to the third question, actually. Yeah, What's the uh, interpretive I, I think problem? I have not understood really to your second question. So uh, perhaps I would say one of the, the most problems is to uh, make the subject clear for the general public. Uh, what are the real problems and what are false problems? Because one gets the impression when discussing about the foundation that quantum mechanics is poorly understood and I think the, 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 the goal of, re, of physicists would be to say, no, the quantum mechanics is, is understood for many, many things, and here are the real problems, here are the things that we really do understand, well, it's often said that we don't understand them. The difficulty is that the language of quantum mechanics is a mathematical language, which is um, nearly impossible to be translated into ordinary language. So one has to find the equivalent in ordinary language of what we are doing and what we are understanding completely yeah, when we are just making a calculation which will allow us to, to just account for some and some phenomena. But okay. Yes, but the, 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 the third question is what interpretive program can make the best sense of quantum mechanics? Is it, is it just a set of rules or, or is there something more? Or can we say can we say that quantum mechanics is just a set of rules which help us to organize uh, the, the, our knowledge and our view to, to see these, uh, these phenomena at a microscopic scale, or is it more than that? Okay. Uh, so that, that's the question, because uh, I think that the same, uh, that's a real question that one could uh, ask about what is an interpretation. But what I wanted to say before that is that Often, when you s read an uh, uh, article for the general public or some discussion, one uh, spoke about interpretation of quantum mechanics, and one makes a distinction between three different things, in my opinion. First, there are different formulations of quantum mechanics. For instance, the quantum mechanics that we learn in uh, university or in uh, uh, grand école, which you learn what is a, a, a wave function, what is uh, our interference, what is the duality particle and uh, within wave and particles. Uh, so it's a mathematics, a way to formulate mathematically the theory. Then there is a problem of interpretation of this mathematical framework, which is the standard quantum theory. And then you can see, one often heard the name of Copenhagen interpretation or the many world interpretation, and there are some more fancy uh, interpretation, like called modal interpretation. I don't know really what it is, but some, so there are many, many, there are a long list and it's increasing every year, I think, of interpretation. And then there are alternate theories. And often, uh, one, say, one discusses, say, for instance, there's a theory of hidden variables, we are, I presume we are going to discuss that later, are interpretation of quantum mechanics. But I think, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many physicists and mathematicians, in fact, there are different theories in the sense that they are incompatible so, with quantum mechanics. So you have the quantum world, the world that we observe, we make experiments, we see atoms, we see light, we see waves, and we try to understand it. Then there is a very good uh, physical theory that is quantum mechanics. And then there are alternate theories that give different predictions and that can be distinguished by experiment or by mathematical reasoning, looking for some contradiction. And this is all often mixed up and said under the name of interpretation of quantum mechanics. I, I already thought myself that hidden variables or pilot waves were another interpretation of quantum mechanics yeah. in the sense that they were still valid. Uh, uh, maybe it's a controversial... Provided, provided they give exactly the same answers. But, but so far, but so, so far if they are non-local, if they are non-local hidden variable, uh, it's what I, I heard is that it's still valid. Yes. Well, there is a little subtle point, but uh, so I think, but that's a very technical point. But I think th they are still incompatible because there is a problem called contextuality, yes. and the hidden so variable. Maybe just, uh, just uh, we get a bit technical, but uh, what do you call contextuality? Uh, I, I have not invented this term, it's yeah. very old. Yeah. Contextuality means that you, uh, uh, that you can interpret by, you can explain by the same set of hidden variable or 
uh, element of reality in the, it's a term that was, uh, I think, uh, introduced by Albert Einstein, in terms of in element of reality underlying the physical world that can explain all the incompatible measurements that you can make on a quantum system. And there are mathematical theorems that state that this is impossible. So in the sense, the element of reality you have to introduce to, to, to describe a, a quantum system depend on the set of measurements you are going to do on this, on this system. And then you got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> if, if the reality de de depends on what you intend to do mm. as a measurement act, then I think for me, for me it's a big problem. It's a no, much it's bigger problem than understanding non-locality or understanding entanglement. But that's my, my, <laughs> my opinion. Not quite the same, nearly the same, but uh, uh, if, we, uh, if we just focus on the idea that interpretation is uh, just a means of putting words on reality. Reality is somewhere, but we have to understand it, understand means putting words. And uh, now these words which we have uh, uh, which we can use our language is a language which has been built by our, macro, by our, our experience at our scale. So in a way, interpreting quantum mechanics is just uh, looking at what can be said at our scale about the phenomena which are at a, just a micro, microscopic scale which we cannot reach directly. So interpretation of quantum mechanics is something in this sense of, inter of yeah. interpretation. Uh, then it, it is, uh, what can we say about a system? Now, what we can say about a system passes through an apparatus, an apparatus which is uh, large, which has, has our scale, which we can read, and so on. And interpretation uh, in this, in the sense that I'm using it, uh, means translation uh, of what can be said about this about a system. Now, uh, in, in this sense, contextuality just comes out uh, by the fact that what we can say about a system passes through an apparatus, mm -hmm. and if there are things about a system which, which, which is prepared in some way, an experiment which is done, then things which can be said with one apparatus and other th things which can be said only with another apparatus, then contextuality means that uh, the the reality which we are checking uh, through an apparatus and the reality we are checking with another apparatus, uh, that we, have, we cannot put them together in words because our words are related to our scale and to an apparatus which is at, at our scale. Do you agree? Yes, uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, perhaps I may I make a comment. It seems that your description of this, uh, uh, this feature of quantum uh, mechanics uh, uh, goes back to, to Niels Bohr and this idea of complementarity. Yes. It's uh, more precise. Is it a more precise it way to formulate this complementarity it is a, principle it is of Bohr, a, or it is it something different? It is, uh, it is a more precise, it is a more, uh, I would I say, more realistic way mm -hmm. uh, in, in the sense that, uh, uh, maybe I say it this way, uh, interpretation is something which emerges from an experiment. Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you don't do an experiment, you cannot say anything. Uh, uh, things which are not tested, tested experimentally, we cannot say anything about them. So if we need different experiments, uh, each experiment will give us one aspect of reality through an, an inference. I will look at the apparatus and looking at the apparatus, the apparatus will say, oh, it's this. So we say, oh, I have a theory which means that if the apparatus says this, then I can say mm -hmm. this thing about the system. Now I take another apparatus, this apparatus I look at its, uh, its answer, then I can say something else, but the, the else which I'm saying here, I cannot put it together because yes. uh, the interpretation I g g gave, this interpretation is not an interpretation of what happens at the microscopic scale, it's an interpretation which goes through the apparatus. And uh, the, 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 the advantage of studying models of measurements and uh, making a theory of a measurement which itself will, it must be a quantum system and trying to 
make something coherent uh, together with that is a way to understand what, what is meant by interpretation. So for you, interpretation is not, you can dissociate an interpretation from the, the, the action of a performing a measurement of interaction with the Yes, the, the, uh, interpretation is something which emerges in the sense of yeah. reduction, in, in, uh, it emerges from yes. a, a, a microscopic a process, a process yes. of interaction between something at our scale, which is an apparatus, and the object. The apparatus which can register, which can print, and so mm -hmm. on, the result. But what is printed is not the same reality as, uh, uh, as the, the microscopic reality. It's just an image of this reality. Okay, so this and an image taken from one side is not the same as the image mm -hmm. taken from another side. So, Roger, you made the perfect transition to question four. So, what are quantum states? Quantum states, that's uh, simple. Quantum states are mathematical objects which gather all information which allows me to make predictions, some prediction or some other prediction about a system. A state is, it, is, is, a state is not a property. A state is not a property of the system. The word state is very bad. Uh, the, the, the word state is uh, uh, just gives the feeling that it's a property of the system. Of the microscopic, of, of the microscopic reality. System. Ah. However, what we call a state, which is represented by, by density metric, as it operator and so on. What we call a state actually is a kind of uh, bookkeeping of all what we can say about a system, but not really about a system itself, but about all systems which are identical to that one, because physics deals with generic mm. questions, not with individual objects. So a state doesn't belong to an individual object. A state is just a, is just. Uh, a, it's a mathematical object which allows me to make predictions on a set of objects all prepared the same way. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. Perhaps I'm a bit more uh, yes. oriented to a, what one can say on a single quantum or a few quantum systems, but I would agree. I, I think that the quantum state is our best way to encode uh, what we can say and we, what we know about a, a quantum system. But, uh, the information we can use to man make manipulation on it. Ma uh, manipulation may mean doing an experiment, doing an observation, uh, use this quantum system to encode information, in quantum information science, but in any way it's, it encodes the, the best we can know and we can do with the quantum system. So for both of you it doesn't have a deeper connection with microscopic reality, if we can... Mm, microscopic reality? Microscopic. Well, I think it, 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 it defines, uh, that's the best way we can speak about wh what is a rea what we can put under the word reality in a, in a quantum world. Yes, you have this famous uh, question between Bohr and Einstein, what are we describing? And uh, Einstein wishes to see what is uh, reality per se, but mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Reality en soi, per se, you say? Reality en soi. Reality en soi, en soi. And this, uh, uh, we, we can't reach it, and so I agree with, with Bohr's position. And Bohr said uh, physics is about what we can say about systems and what we can predict about systems. This mm -hmm. is the goal of physics, but the goal of physics, uh, physics cannot succeed to say what is the deep nature of the objects which we are studying at a microscopic scale. And in this sense, mm. uh, in, at least in this discussion between Einstein and Bohr, uh, Bohr won. So and, and, and in fact, the question five is about, and six also, about probabilities and randomness in quantum mechanics, which is an interesting problem. And the <coughs> question five is, does quantum mechanics imply irreducible randomness in nature? So yes, so this question is very badly set. I would say quantum mechanics implies an irreducibly probabilistic nature, of uh, not of nature, but of our, our description of nature. Our description of the nature must be irreducibly probabilistic because we cannot uh, answer all questions at the same time, questions about incompatible quantities. But it is not nature which is irreducibly probabilistic. 
it is our description which is irresistibly probabilistic and in a way that's obvious because probability is something which doesn't belong to nature probability is just a measure of our ignorance I yes, agree. Would agree. I, I think that definitely quantum mechanics implies or is a way to formulate uh, uncertainty in nature, which is a bit different from randomness. Uncertainty means that you cannot be sure of any uh, of everything at the same time, which is a bit different and larger than randomness, which means that we see something evolving and being random. I think quantum mechanics really is, uh, states that there is irreducible uncertainty. And some it manifests itself as randomness of quantum process, but but uh, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, thought as much as uh, Roger about what is what are probabilities and what are what is uncertainty and what is the measurement of yes, ignorance. So I, I prefer to yes, and this not say no. This is precisely the next question. Yeah, the next question. Oh, yes. So yes. probabilities yes. are they subjective or objective? No, that's uh, a good question. No, there, this one. there is a, a book. Uh, I don't remember whose whose book of probabilities, which says that uh, there is uh, as many interpretations of probabilities as uh, as as individuals using probabilities. Uh, now, just splitting probabilities as being subjective or objective is uh, uh, is uh, much too rough. Now, uh, one extreme position is to say that probability is objective means what, what, what does subjective and objective mean? Now, uh, objective probabilities, we could interpret them as saying that it, it is frequencies, frequencies of occurrence, and this interpretation of probabilities, which are in quantum mechanics, uh, this is an interpretation which can be given if you can perform an experiment many, many, many times. And if you can perform it many times, you will never get exactly the same result. But the various results which you obtain have some free, free relative frequencies. <coughs> and then this is uh, uh, one definition of probability. Now, there is another definition of probability, which is uh, a way of predicting something from a, a knowledge which will already have. So it's called bias you know, by some, by many people. <coughs> but then you have ver various types of, uh, uh, of uh, positions about what does this probability mean. Now, in quantum mechanics, it's very clear in, uh, what it means. Uh, it means that uh, you just assign some probability distribution by using the idea that you have a theory which is which you believe in, which, you, which is perfect, which is quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, you have a prior probability. What's important in, pro in probability theory is to start from something which is solid. Something which is solid is a prior probability. If you, if you play cards, then you have a prior probability, which is that uh, all permutations of uh, the cards between the various players are equally probable. So. This is the prior, and this is very important to have this prior. And then from that prior and from external knowledge, you can make predictions. So this is one type of subjective probability, which is perfectly sensible. Now, there is another type of subjective probability. And uh, unfortunately, there are uh, well-known physicists who are just pushing uh, the, the, uh, the, their ideas in this direction, which is the truly subjective probabilities, in which case uh, so these don't, don't apply, ha apply to phenomena in which you, you don't know anything, economics, for instance, or uh, rare air earthquakes and so on, in which you have no experience, you have, you have absolutely no prior, and prior probability is something which is left to subjective uh, ideas, mm -hmm. which means that uh, you, looking at one phenomenon, you will attribute it one probability, and I will attribute it another probability, having exactly the same knowledge of the, of the, of the phenomenon. However, I mean, I, probabilities which are used in physics have a partly subjective aspect because they intend to predict phenomena. However, it is intersubjective, I would say. Intersubjective, meaning that 
all people having the same information must make the same predictions. Otherwise, uh, it's not science. It is It is science. It is. Uh, unfortunately, there are many people in, uh, who apply probability to domains, rare probabilities, for instance. Rare probabilities is something which has, in my opinion, absolutely no meaning. I, I have heard people who just uh, attribute a probability to an earthquake of uh, this size, an earthquake which takes place every two, two centuries. Attributing a probability to it is just, for me, a nonsense. And this is not what happens in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, we have a prior, and we all, if we are facing one question, we are going to attribute the same probability. Of course, provided we have exactly the same information about this system. François, do you agree? I think, uh, well, perhaps I, I, I agree too much uh, with Roger for this debate, but uh, I think that uh, indeed uh, quantum probabilities are uh, rather objective. Uh, I, I still consider them that they, are, they have to be considered in this Bayesian sense uh, of uh, 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 giving uh, a precise mathematical definition of what we know about the system, what we can expect about it. Uh, but still, uh, they have to be objective in the sense that uh, many different uh, physicists or observers or quantum measurement uh, of apparatus uh, should, at the end of the, what they do, uh, obtain the same number for the probability they assign to yes, to this, some event. this is what I called yes. inter intersubjective subjective because the word yes. objective seems to mean that yes. it's property it's of the object. Yes, it's yes. not a property of the yes, object, yes. it's a probability of we all who are observing the so Probably not specific to the application of no. probabilities no. to the quantum world. I think there is the same the same question and the same difference of point of view on how what are probabilities and how to use them in the classical world, yes. in yes. the quantum world, mm -hmm. in physics, mm -hmm. in economy, in I don't know, sociology, climate science, in pure mathematics. No, for fortunately, in game theory. fortunately in quantum mechanics we have a prior. The prior is that there is an invariance, which is a unitary invariance, which, t which plays exactly the same role as yes. the invariance by permutations in game theory. In yes. theory of games is the theory of games is perfectly yes. sensible because there is this prior probability which yes. is really sensible. Yes, but perhaps on now if we, if if you played with dice and if these dice were systematically biased and heavy on one side and, and so on, uh, applying probability would be just uh, yes. useless and uh, not fruitful. Yeah, but perhaps one should ask that those questions are still. Uh, debated and uh, important when one tries to apply quantum uh, theory to quantum cos to cosmology oh, or yes. to quantum gravity where the which prior assigned to uh, the wave function of the universe or mm -hmm. objects like that that mm -hmm. are not still very well understood uh, it's, uh, it's an open question so those questions are still have to be asked in some yes. area of quantum physics Mm -hmm. Okay, so that let's uh, let's let's move to the, the yes. quantum measurement problem. Is it is it really a serious problem or, or just a false uh, issue? Uh, we have, uh, <coughs> I, I guess we have. So the, no, the, what is the measurement problem? The, the word measurement problem is used for by people for, with many different meanings. The most uh, deep meaning of measurement problem is the following: quantum theory deals with ensembles of systems, that is, a we have a statistical ensemble and we can make predictions uh, on statistical ensembles with the tools of quantum mechanics, but these tools uh, are uh, not uh, suited to describe individual uh, systems so, uh, and individual processes. Now, if I make an individual measurement, then this individual measurement gives some well-defined result and of course, if I repeat the measurement, I'll obtain <coughs> another one. But at each time, this result will, will be will be unique and well defined. Now, the measurement problem 
we, we feel it, uh, we see it with many other people as being the following one. How can we explain this property by just treating the object which is tested and the apparatus which, is, uh, which we use to test it but as a unique quantum system? So you will have a, a unique quantum system which has its own uh, rules and how come uh, the rules of quantum mechanics applied to that have this remarkable property, remarkable from the viewpoint of quantum mechanics, not remarkable from the viewpoint of daily ex experience, because every day we, we know that when we do something, it has one, one given result, but understanding this classical property from quantum mechanics. Now, what we have done during the last 10 years is to just elaborate a, 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 a rather general theory, starting from models, and to, at least for ideal measurements, uh, then the program is, uh, I, I think it is solved. Uh, we can understand this uniqueness within quantum mechanics by just uh, adding s some small uh, postulates. Uh, the, Could you elaborate the, the a point, little bit? The point, the, point, the point is the following. The point is that quantum mechanics allows you to show that a structure, if you take many measurements, now you can take the, the whole set of measurements and you can take subsets. Now the, the whole set of measurements and the subsets which you, you, you take, you can characterize them by weights which, are, which have no interpretation directly in the street framework of quantum mechanics, but which have exactly the same structure as ordinary probabilities, and therefore we can interpret them as ordinary probabilities. So uh, into ordinary probabilities emerge from uh, quantum mechanics. In a way, I can make a, a, a comparison. Uh, this emergence is uh, a bit of the same nature as the emergence of irreversibility. We know that uh, if we take a classical gas, for instance, of particles, the laws, the microscopic laws are reversible, and uh, there is no reason uh, that at a mi microscopic scale we have a behavior in which uh, we have a piece of gas which is hot, the other one which is cold. When we put them together, uh, it becomes mild, but uh, there is no reason that we have the inverse uh, process. However, we observe the inverse process. So we have an emergence of uh, irreversibility from reversibility. And here it's about the same. A measurement is an irreversible process in which, moreover, we have emergence not only of irreversibility, but we have also emergence of classical probabilities out of something which is the quantum formalism, which is not the same as uh, classical probabilities. So this is the way we, we, we think the, the measurement problem is solved. So the question was, uh, uh, is, is this a pseudo problem? No, it was not a pseudo problem. Are you blocked? Will, will, will it be blocked? And is it not solvable? No, it is solvable within quantum mechanics. So I think, uh, rather than a problem, it's a question. Uh, can we understand in, uh, in, um, in within quantum mechanics how uh, the act of performing a measurement with a, a macroscopic apparatus, because all apparatus, including our eyes, our fingers that we touch something, uh, are macroscopic objects? And I think the, this question has been uh, started to be uh, dealt as soon as quantum mechanics by, was uh, created by Heisenberg, by John von Neumann. And I think now we have a pretty good uh, idea, in particular by the recent work by Roger and Theo and uh, uh, his collaborators, that everything is compatible. We, we see that it is compatible, uh, although the initial uh, assumption of quantum mechanics that how observing a quantum system we get a definite answer that this, for instance, basically yes or no or a particle that is at this position, which seems a bit paradoxical. Uh, it turns out to be logically consistent with how quantum mechanics works. 
So in, in this sense, I don't think it's a roadblock. Uh, problem might happen later if new experiments are performed and see that things do not uh, happen as we expect from ordinary rules of quantum mechanics. But it's an important feature of quantum mechanics that we have to understand and we start to understand quite precisely. But still, there are many, many interesting questions about how a quantum measurement apparatus uh, works and what we can do out of these quantum measurements. Yes, and uh, one difficulty is that uh, this apparatus is macroscopic mm -hmm. and therefore what we have to do is quantum statistical mechanics. And uh, there is a social problem which is that people who dealt initially with uh, measurement problem were not really fond of uh, quantum statistical mechanics. They believed uh, in uh, a quasi-mythical uh, position for of pure states, that is of uh, wave functions. So they try to analyze things always in terms of wave functions. And this, of course, doesn't fit with uh, macroscopic objects. Yes, that's true. But it's uh, what one could say perhaps is that uh, uh, idea uh, took time to, to permeate within the physics community because after all, uh, the scientists who first gave a, a, a coherent formulation of the problem of quantum measurement or the question of quantum measurement is John von Neumann who is also one of the founders of quantum statistical mechanics. Oh, no, he, he, he has that idea of rather clear, but uh, yes. at that time, quantum statistical mechanics, he just founded it. He invented the entropy, for instance. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, we needed uh, lots of developments of yes. showing how we, we can deal with a macroscopic apparatus yes. within quantum statistical That's mechanics. He moved too fast towards the yes. yes. 1930 was... Uh, oh. So this is to the next question, uh, the, the number eight. What do the experimentally observed violations of Bell's inequality tell us about nature? No, Bell, Bell's inequalities. So I, can answer. So I, I think they, they just tell us that uh, when you speak about locality and causality in physics, you must uh, listen and write and, and read what Einstein did in uh, uh, 1905 and not what he did in 1935. Uh, so you have to take locality uh, in the sense of Einstein and uh, in special relativity and locality, not you mean, locality yeah. yes, Lo yeah. and not in the sense of uh, Einstein and John Bell. John Bell in his very famous and interesting paper of uh, 1933 I think uh, introduced the concept of locality uh, that is much uh, restricted than the concept of locality that is used in physics. He wanted to have locality with respect to some ideal uh, uh, hidden variable. And both the mathematics that were in fact uh, existed prior to Bell's theorem and the mathematics that uh, Bell uh, used to show his famous theorem uh, showed that this is, this is incompatible with, with, with quantum mechanics. So, but this concept of locality is not the concept of locality that we used in uh, high energy physics and that we have to use when we teach. So the difference is, is uh, for Bell, he had this locality I with respect to hidden variables as yes, well. Yes, he wanted to have hidden variables that, that were attached to uh, uh, part of, the of a quantum system, like having two photons. Uh, people are doing experiments now having the photons carry uh, independent element of reality. And that's, we know that this is both not occurring in nature and mathematically inconsistent. So, trust the mathematics. Uh, when, uh, uh, when you think about quantum mechanics, trust the math and trust the experiments. That's a good and, and moreover, do not put together within the same logical argument results of experiments which are incompatible and which are made with different apparatuses. Because yes. uh, Bell's the paradox in Bell's inequality and in other similar paradoxes comes from the fact that you, put to, you, you have uh, one type of result which uh, is yes. made with one apparatus, another one which is made with another apparatus, 
you are not allowed to put them together. In the same way as uh, if when you take a picture from this side and you take a picture from the other side, now in quantum mechanics you are not allowed to put these two pictures together to reconstruct the object from both sides. Next question is uh, about the foundations of quantum mechanics again. How can the foundations of quantum mechanics benefit from approaches that reconstruct quantum mechanics from fundamental principles? Can reconstruction reduce the need for interpretation? I, I don't think quantum mechanics needs to be reconstructed. It's perfect as it, as it is. Maybe uh, some progress will come and we'll have to find deeper principles if we succeed uh, one day to uh, con reconcile quantum mechanics with gravity, that is to have a new theory of space and time, but for the time being quantum mechanics is our best theory, so reconstructing it is just uh, a waste of time. François? Yes, I, I don't know exactly what reconstruction means, but I played a little bit with that game, but I think to, to, to reconstruct something you first need to deconstruct it. And uh, quantum mechanics, I don't think, uh, has been uh, There's no need. There is no so, need to uh, deconstruct it. Mm. Looking at uh, trying to formulate the axiom of quantum mechanics from starting from different point of view to, to reach the same theory as, for instance, people uh, are trying to do in quantum information, trying to formulate the axiom of quantum mechanics from quantum information postulate was saying uh, with a quantum system we can manipulate information according to such and such law. That's an interesting point of view but as far as I know it always leads to the same uh, quantum theory quantum me which is quantum mechanics. So from that point of view it's a different way to climb the same mountain. So it's interesting. We are like to find new way to climb a mountain but uh, I agree with Roger. Uh, we definitely need uh, something radically different, like quantum gravity, to 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 have a new theory. So then, if you could choose one experiment, this is the next question. Regardless of its uh, technical feasibility, uh, to help answer a very important foundational question, what what would, would it be? Do you have an idea? I think the experiments which are, uh, are being performed in which these weak experiments, non-demolishing experiments, uh, give, bring something uh, interesting uh, about, about foundations, and, but simply they need to be explained by theory, which, which will not be so easy. I think we should uh, succeed in building uh, microscopic black holes and see what happens oh. if if they really evaporate, uh, what are the So who effects? would be the observer <laughs> for this black hole? have to be a bit far away, <laughs> but one uh, <laughs> well, has to be cautious, very cautious. Or to, to observe the breakdown of quantum mechanics at a certain scale, no? We, well, to we, see we whether expect. it breaks down and what's really happening. Because after all, that's how quantum mechanics was, uh, was created. That's because there were a lot of experiments uh, doing with atoms, with radiation, that couldn't be explained by classical physics. And quantum mechanics was invented and created by a, uh, an interplay between theoretical uh, idea, like the Bohr atom, and experiments. And often one forgets to, in the presentation of quantum mechanics, now we have a reconstructed history in a nice way and we present it in a, in a logical way. But uh, the way it, it happens in the, in the 1920s, and 10 and 20s, up to the 30s, a lot of ideas were suggested by great mind and thrown out be because there was just an experiment uh, giving the opposite result. Now so I think we, we need experiments in quantum gravity and that's much harder to do, of course. Now a few years ago there were uh, uh, the hope that experiments would put a limit between a microscopic world in which quantum mechanics applied, and maybe uh, quantum mechanics applies for objects which are uh, complicated, a little more complicated, but uh, as soon as you reach some size, then quantum mechanics breaks down and it's classical mechanics which takes place. 
So there were some experiments, and uh, it seems that there is no limit. Yes. We, uh, a few years ago, we could think that maybe uh, um, having uh, an interference between a polymer and, its, and, and itself is something which uh, uh, is forbidden, but uh, uh, people have succeeded to, to let interfere large objects with, with themselves, which means that this limit, which was which mm. would have been interesting from the foundational viewpoint, doesn't seem to mm. exist, and mm. quantum mechanics yes. applies at all scales. So, this, uh, so these experiments are, OK. There it's must be it's interesting, it's interesting. classical limit at some point. It's yeah. interesting oh. that there is, a, in principle, there, is, there yes. seems to be no limit. Yes, I agree, but I, I think. So what makes it, like, like, can you, can you, just for my, my own uh, curiosity, what, what makes that some some outcome of experiments are, are really classical and some no, but uh, the people have succeeded to let interfere uh, uh, carbon uh, uh, sixty yeah. to go to yeah, even bigger itself. molecules even now. bigger people molecules virus virus even uh, yes yeah, we are excited because they say viruses are, are living things but of course they are completely frozen in the experiment. But, uh, oui. but I would say that those experiments for me are very, very nice experiments, but they, they just uh, confirm that quantum mechanics uh, yes. should apply to microscopic objects, although it's very, very difficult and it's impossible to see quantum effects for macroscopical objects, or objects with uh, 10 to the power 5 uh, atoms or 10 to the power 6 atoms. But from the theoretical point of view, quantum mechanics say that nothing should happen and you should not reach any contradiction with uh, what we observe in everyday life at, uh, in the classical realm, what's called the classical realm of, of physics. So okay. I, I expect more radical, that we need much more so radical experiments so to see something. So, so maybe I just ask just a question for my own yes. knowledge. So I don't get to in some system, we reach the classical limit after a certain size or whatever happens in size, inside. And uh, for some others, it seems that uh, you can go as big as you, uh, I mean, the size can increase uh, almost up to infinity without reaching uh, the classical limit. That's the point. So what makes a difference between those systems? Or is it is it uh, formulated correctly, or no, do you want the, the, the to say something the, else? The, the difference is uh, which quantities you are testing. Uh, if for, for a large system, you cannot test all variables of the system. Mm. If you could test all variables of the system, then of course, uh, all that would be quantum mechanical. Uh, since you you can read uh, test only some macroscopic variables. These ones usually don't manifest uh, when oh, okay. the system okay. is large uh, quantum properties, but they may. So what, what would be all variables of a system, all variables of all the microscopic elements of the system? Yes, if you could test them, of course, uh, then uh, you would test uh, quantum mechanics at any scale. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, That's okay so the, the question number 12. If you have a preferred interpretation of quantum mechanics, what would it take to make you switch sides? François or Roger? No, I don't know, because uh, I'm not sure I have a preferred interpretation in the sense of uh, just a view, viewing the quantum formalism that we manipulate. But I would say either a new idea or new experimental results. But uh, I don't know which one. So I think definitely if there are some experimental results that uh, disagree with quantum mechanics, then we have to change our point of view on quantum mechanics itself. But yes. otherwise, uh, yes. I'm not too worried about uh, if I if someday I change my point of view of quantum mechanics. Do you have a preferred interpretation or, or not? Well, uh, I would say I have the I mostly agree with the point of view of which is often uh, denoted, uh, but it's a bit ca uh, caricature as a Copenhagen point of view. Although it was never stated by uh, Niels Bohr in the way it is often presented, uh, but the, the standard way of viewing quantum mechanics as a way to make predictions on quantum system and use them and understanding the best what we can do out of quantum system 
so it's often called the operational point of view, uh, is I think my uh, my preferred interpretation. But it's just a matter of preference. If you had to work with another interpretation, you'd be happy. Well, if mm -hmm. I think uh, as long as I'm still using the equation of quantum mechanics and don't disagree with them, uh, it's a matter of preference. Uh, but if some someday I just say no, it it, it can be true. Uh, I can't believe that. Uh, then I, I, I will be in a troubled state of mind. Do you think this day will come? Well, perhaps. Who knows? <laughs> okay. I'm getting old, so I'm, uh, <laughs> my state of mind changes less often. I, I would say there is no real interpretation of quantum mechanics. There is a formulation of quantum mechanics. Yes. There are different formulations, but we know that mathematically they are completely equivalent. Uh, however, these formulations have in common one thing, which is that they are statistical, and uh, that uh, they, they deal about ensembles of statistical ensembles of r similar objects. So this is the, f the general formulation. Then interpretation is something which comes out for, for, for each given experiment. Then you can, can interpret it in terms of ordinary language. Now, to change Probably it's uh, quantum gravity if, if someday it comes out, which will change things because then we'll have to change our, our ideas about what is time, what is space, uh, and so on. And, uh, actually, the question 13 is a little bit related to that. Is, is it's not really a scientific question. Is how do personal beliefs and values, whatever it means, influence one's choice of interpretation? So. Uh, I guess uh, the daughter had in mind if you if you believe in God or not, uh, does it influence your your view of quantum mechanics? Right? That's uh, the hidden question, I guess. Yes, it's uh, it's uh, uh, mathematicians, for instance, are idealist uh, most often, and not materialist because they believe that uh, there is a, a kind of mathematicians. God. You say there is a yes there because there is a kind of God. Uh, which is below the m nature, below matter, and this God is mathematics. Uh, so, uh, in, in some sense, uh, idealism mean, uh, leads people to believe that one could explain things, uh, les choses en soi, per se. Uh, whereas, uh, when you are materialist, uh, then uh, uh, you don't believe that there is anything transcendent. So in that case, you are rather modest, uh, and you believe that science is uh, to try to dig our hole and to understand things, understand with our poor uh, language, with our poor way of seeing things. We build mathematics to, to understand uh, things, but mathematics don't, don't exist outside, outside ourselves when you are material. So this makes a difference. And uh, if, if you are materialistic, then uh, you are more modest than when you are idealist. Einstein versus Bohr. Uh, well, it's a personal question. I'm not yes. sure I am a, a deep thinker enough, uh, thinker deep enough to, to give a good answer. I think they, 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 both, uh, they both influence because uh, when, st when I think about quantum physics, uh, I have a tendency to, to change my mind about some other opinion I have about, uh, for instance, the difference between uh, idealism and uh, what you call materialism, but that I think is more uh, often denoted as pragmatism in philosophy. Uh, and so they both it's part of it's part of life, and both influence each other. So, so I'm not sure I can say more. Uh, Just a, a small question between the two of you: uh, between Einstein and Bohr, which one would be the ide idealist, and which one? Would Einstein, be? of course. Uh, yes, and the pragmatist yes. is Bohr. Yes, uh. yes, of course. Uh, and this uh, question is uh, also at the root of this old uh, debate about uh, f why is mathematics uh, so well fitted to, uh, to physics. So it's uh, the, the, this old question, that, uh, it's a kind of miracle. Where does this miracle come from? Uh, so some 
answers are, oh, okay, the miracle comes from the fact that uh, uh, mathematics is uh, the essence of, uh, of matter and matter comes out of mathematics in a way. So it's a kind of Pythagorean. Yeah, yeah, Pythag yeah, Pythagorean. Much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at people uh, like, how is that called? The catastrophe. Tom. Uh, Tom. 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 Yes, Tom. Tom had exactly that uh, that viewpoint. Yes. Uh, but uh, physicists usually don't have this viewpoint, and uh, my own answer to this old question is that physics and mathematics develop more or less in parallel, and physics benefits from the progresses of mathematics, and conversely, mathematics develops in at places where physics brings them questions. So this convergence between mathematics and physics is just the result of the evolution mm -hmm. parallel so of it's physics. It's a co-evolution. It's a co-evolution, it's a symbiosis of uh, mathematics and physics. But, but uh, this is not at all uh, the, the, the only answer. Some other people believe that many other answers, some philosophy, philosophical positions mm -hmm. just have an influence there. Yeah. So the, the question number 14, is a bit related. What is the role of philosophy, if any, in advancing our underst understanding of the foundations of quantum mechanics? Yes, this question I would set in the other way. Understanding the foundations of quantum mechanics just gives us some way of understanding, of, of making good philosophy. Making philosophy out of science uh, is not fruitful uh, in this domain. Epistemology is something which comes out from science. Yeah, I, I'm not a philosopher, so I'm not sure I will give a sensible answer. Uh, I think perhaps, at least, uh, my impression is that when quantum mechanics was invented by very young uh, physicists, s uh, many of them were had a much better culture in, in philosophy than we have now, and it helped them to get rid of the misconception about classical physics, for some of them. But so we should uh, use philosophy as a way to get rid of old ideas. As um, so next question, where would you put your money when it comes to predicting the next major development in the foundations of quantum mechanics? Unfortunately, I have no money to put in that. <laughs> in that. Uh, but uh, it's, it was also already said in quantum gravity. Yeah, I would say to quantum gravity. So we are at the last question of this uh, uh, this little uh, interview. Uh, uh, what single question? So it's a typical question about the foundation of quantum mechanics. Would you put to a, a omniscient being, whatever it means? It's a question it's about foundations. Mm. Yes, like do you play dice or something like that or? <laughs> See, it's a bit of a joke, so I, I prepared yes. an answer that is also a joke, which is, uh, if the world is quantum, how do you know you are omniscient? <laughs> which is <laughs> uh, but I, I think it's a question about the foundation. It's a bit of a joke, but... Uh, so, and you? No, I don't know what omniscient means. Yes, that's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs>